and you're going to just honk your horn and make as much noise as possible, and hopefully somebody pass by will, will, will help you. Call 911. Okay. Seven. Uh, when you say you have implied consent with a child, um, are you supposed to ask them to reach? Like, oh, good question. Here's the thing. All right, so to, to ask your question, John, yeah. uh, I don't want to say, yes, you must know the age, but a rough idea is good enough. Okay. A rough idea is good enough. I mean, obviously, uh, if we're teaching level C, it's the child is from 1 to 8, but for paramedics, they don't even go by that. We tell you to judge. If the person has reached adolescent, then they are an adult. If they have not reached adolescent, <coughs> then they're considered a child. So yeah, to answer your question, just roughly is good enough. You don't have to be precise. You probably have a sibling on the bus, or yeah. friends know how old they are. Yeah, as long as you can look at a child and say, you know what, he looks like a child, then you have an implied consent. If you look at somebody and you say, you know what, he looks like an, <laughs> an adult, I need to consent from the And that is good enough. Right? You've been to middle school a lot older than that. Yeah. 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 Probably grade school, just use your common judgment. He looks like a child. No need for. <coughs> he looks like an adult. I need consent. Yeah. Okay, so uh, a student once asked me, he says, and we're talking about consent. You know, hey, hey, are you okay? Can I help you? Again, uh, unconscious, you have implied consent. The child, you have implied consent. What if he asks, He's nonverbal, or he he doesn't understand English. I, I have a special needs child that has asked me to on my bus. Okay, okay. <laughs> thanks for bringing it up. Okay, so I tried to have him by consent, but thanks for bringing up that, Ronald. What if he's an adult? Then what? So he just cannot communicate. Then what do we do? That's basically. Can we help them? Do we have implied consent under that situation? Well, are they the answer is no. Are they conscious or unconscious? Or? Okay, so they're conscious, but they are either nonverbal, yeah. they cannot speak, or maybe they, they're deaf, they cannot hear you, or maybe they, they, they don't understand English. We still need consent in that case, okay? We do not have implied consent. We must to try our best to communicate. So we need to say, I want to help you. Is it okay if I, if I help you? Okay. So you still need to communicate. And you still must get some kind of a gesture, either like this or, or like that. Okay. So you still need, you do not have implied consent. Another situation is, a student asked me, he says, what if the family members don't want you to help? No, stop, stop it, don't, don't touch them. And the person is unconscious. Should we, should we help them in that situation? No. Good, okay, so Nancy says no. Anybody would help? Is this a child uh, or? No, okay, so, so that person yeah. on the ground is an adult. So he's unconscious, which means by law we have implied consent. I would say if it's a sibling, I would still go ahead and help. Okay. If it's a parent, I would say no. All right, all right. So I agree with both Nancy and John. The reason I agree with both you guys is because I totally leave it up to you. This is one situation where you have to judge. You have to use your judgment. The only thing that I'm going to tell you guys is if you decide to help them, you do have the right by law to help them. Okay? Because it is the unconscious person. Because by law you have implied consent, you can help. It doesn't matter whether the wish of the family. The family can wish he dies, 
Ned's his eyes kind of just open up. Yeah. I mean, the family members, you know. So it's not the wish of the family members. It's the wish of him, the person who's on the ground. So if he wants to live, and because you have implied consent, which assumes that, please help me, I want to live, you have that right to help him. With that said, I also agree with Nancy and, and with John. I don't want you to get into the fight with the family. I, want, I don't want you to get punched in the face. Okay? So that's why I leave it up to you. Know that you do have implied consent because it's the wish of him, not the family members. But there is no need to, yeah, no, no, I have implied consent, I will help him. I mean, there's no need. That's the reality, right? All you really need to do is, you don't want me to help him? Fine. Because I, I would do that too. You don't want me to help him? Fine. I'll just call my mom. Okay, and that's the reality of the situation. And honestly, there might actually be reasons why the family don't want you to help them. Okay? There might be reasons that you don't know of. So if they insist, don't help them, then I wouldn't. I just pick up the phone. 